I've been a painter for over 40 years and wanted to be one from the age of five. I'm going to talk about the work in this exhibition. I'll try to connect some of its themes and ideas to work from earlier on and to show you some work that's not in the current exhibition. I studied painting at the Fine Art Department Birmingham Polytechnic in the mid-1970s when, as a friend of mine said, painting was king. At Birmingham, I got a taste for working big and a good working knowledge of traditional approaches to different painting genres, a really useful knowledge of the history of art and a love of experimentation, particularly with the materials and processes of painting. It was an exciting time to be an artist. I was and am interested in all kinds of painting, At that time, I was particularly interested in abstract expressionism and Jackson Pollock's early work in particular. I also started my love affair with the works of Manet and Goya. It was in my final year at Birmingham that I really began to find out who I was as an artist. I discovered that I could take images and ideas from a diverse range of sources, including borrowing from other artists and from photographs that I saved from newspapers and magazines, as well as from things that I could see and draw. Drawing has always been a first resource for me. Photography as a starting point was not encouraged there, which I think has led to a lifelong interest in using it as a source, although I often quarrel with it creatively, I think, and take issue with its realist limitations and flatness of surface. At Birmingham, I discovered that being female and growing up on the land are fundamental to who I am as a person and as an artist. I discovered, too, that my best work comes from personal experience. I also discovered that I could use painting to find out, as it were, what bothers me. I didn't need to have it all worked out in advance. Making paintings for me has always been a journey towards some kind of understanding. These are still my key approaches to making my work to this day. I often borrow images from other artists. The artist that I have most consistently borrowed from is Manet. I borrowed his dead Toreador, for this painting, Death in the Field, that I made when I was a student in 1976. I used all kinds of materials here in addition to oil paint, including liquid roofing felt, gloss paint and paper. The umbrella image came from a magazine photograph and the female figure from a life drawing I made using a specifically posed model. I began to realise as the painting progressed that it was about the fairly recent death of my father. In this exhibition, the two female figures used in number 13, The Good and the Bad, are borrowed from the crucifixion painted in 1370 by Jacopo de Chioni. I saw this years ago in the National Gallery. The figures, the two Marys, are given a new context and become part of a very different story. In the original painting, which is quite small, they are tiny. The figures in my paintings are life-size and are associated with ideas about the domestic sphere and notions about what might be considered good and bad female behaviour. I made a number of paintings based on ideas about the land when I was a student. Coming from a farm in a picturesque Wiltshire village, I was only familiar with two kinds of landscape paintings as a child. Those that I saw reproduced in shell oil calendars that were hung around the house usually by Roland Hilder of the Kent countryside. That seemed very exotic to me. The other paintings I saw were by the amateur artists who flocked with their easels and oil paints around Urchfront's pretty village green and duck pond. I did not see any really great paintings until my first visit to the National Gallery in London when I was 18. What I did begin to realise about working with a landscape was that I wasn't interested in the landscape as a view, landscape seen from a fixed and still point, I was interested in it as an experience, moving through it, its smells, its sensations, its lives, its deaths. I was also interested at this point in Ted Hughes's poetry, particularly in his book Crow. This attitude to working with the landscape is, to a great extent, still my working position now. I have collected information about the landscape in various ways over the years. Around the year 2000, I made some large drawings on canvas with charcoal where I began by making rubbings directly from the surface of the land and of the beach and then worked on further in the studio. These drawings also became starting points for paintings. Some of the landscape-based paintings in this exhibition, such as number four, Float, are based on photographs and some are based on spliced together image from photographs and video stills. Photographs are usually taken from a single viewpoint, whilst video enables a recording of a journey into and through the landscape. Sometimes these spliced together images are reorientated, such as in number 11, Girl in a Mac. 
I made a number of A4 photo collages, which were the basis for many paintings. I often make a number of paintings from the same source. Earlier versions are usually monochrome or near monochrome. It often takes a while to find a colour palette for an image, and then there is the opportunity to experiment with that too. Number 15, Woodlight, is one of a number of paintings that are based on photographs of woodland projected over a pink ground, an attempt perhaps to feminise the landscape. These earlier paintings were shown at Customs House in 2006 and are made with glitter on a pink acrylic ground. They look dull as photographs. In reality, as you walk past them, they twinkle in the night and appear to be almost animated. One of these woodland photographs was the starting point for number three, Lola in green. In this painting, Manet's Lola de Valence is inveigled into and concealed within thickets of paint and hidden by layers of marks. I have often made reference to John Everett Millet's painting of Ophelia. An earlier painting of mine called Float from 1996 is the forerunner to paintings such as number four, Float Green, in this exhibition. This image is not a direct lift from the Millet painting, but comes more from a sense of deep connection to this semi-submerged female form, which for me is a potent and powerful metaphor. Between 2002 and 10, my interest in working from the landscape evolved into asking questions about how we take the landscape home with us. I interrogated familiar domestic objects for signs of the outside and started to use scatterings of natural elements such as leaf mould as grounds for my paintings, which would be shown indoors. The leaf litter was lifted directly onto wet-sized canvas from the woodland floor and can be seen forming the background in spring of 2006 and somewhere made in 2009. Fabric, clothes and domestic items all make their appearance in these paintings, which I showed at Bayart in Cardiff in 2009. Clothes, costumes, dressing up, hiding and being in disguise informed a large series of paintings called Light, Dark, Dark, Light, made between 2010 and 2016, many of which were shown in the Globe Gallery in Newcastle in 2014, when it was based in a large former bank building opposite the Discovery Museum. Number seven in this exhibition, called Two of a Kind, which you're standing next to, was the first painting where I mixed together figures and images from different eras. In this painting, Thomas Gainsborough's Mary Countess Howe meets Twiggy, the famous 60s model, in an elegant 18th century park. Later paintings in this series introduced into the mix pictorial spaces from completely unrelated paintings, for example from the American abstract expressionist painter Hans Hoffmann's painting Equipoise, which inform the space in a number of paintings, including the following groups of work, where Mary Countess of Howe has now joined the developing cast of characters and becomes the archetypal governess of Victorian novels. Mogul painting and the flat planes of brilliant colour used to depict space also inform this body of work. The figure of St Margaret of Antioch by the late 17th century Spanish painter Zubron in various disguises joined the party on several occasions. In this exhibition, painting number 14, Costume Drama, and number 10, Assembly, along with a large print studio visitor installed in the lower fusion gallery, represents this series of work. Spode Italian ware, which I have loved since I was a child and which both my mother and grandmother collected, depicts a perfect neoclassical pastoral landscape in pristine blue and white. I have often subverted and quoted this idyll in various paintings, including Apotheosis and Domestic Bliss, both of which were completed in 2010. They are part of a series that includes two paintings shown in this exhibition. Number 12, New Order, was completed in 2010, and number 13, The Good and the Bad, sometime later. In this studio shot, you can see some of the paintings and drawings related to the two paintings I have just mentioned. A single spode Italian ware plate became the source for several paintings made between 2008 and 2010. In this exhibition, 
Vestiges of this image, now broken, appear on the floor of my studio and can be seen in the circular drawing number 24 hanging on the stairs on the way to the upper fusion space, where the other drawings from the same series are also installed. These circular drawings are based on objects that I made from discarded paintings and other rubbish in my studio. When I had made enough objects to fill the space, I photographed them and have used these photographs and drawings in various ways. I hope to show the large paintings based on my experience of working in a studio in my next solo exhibition. I have worked in the same studio at Villiers Street in the East End of Sunderland for the past 27 years. Some of the completed paintings in the Studio Story series can be seen on my website. Ideas and images leak from one group of work to another. Painting for me is a silent and powerful form of communication. The story that I have told you today is just one version. You will bring your own stories, ideas and experiences to the exhibition. Go with them. They're yours.